So good afternoon and welcome to A Course in Miracles, taking a spin from a radical non-duality perspective. And, and tonight's talk is something which is so close to my heart awareness, which is a mistake which is so commonly being made by the non-dualist teacher. And although it sounds amazing, sounds so enlightened, is a critical misperception of the ego. And as we're all aware of, and all non-dual teachers are aware of, is that as soon as an, a concept is, is captured, is understood, I hate the word understood because you can't stand under anything because there's nothing to stand under, it's all illusion. The minute you think you understand something, ego says, I'll take that. And you think you're transcending. Transcend, when tr true transcendence happens, self-realization happens, what people call enlightenment or awakening. There's a silence which precipitates the entire, there's a concession, experience of it. And there's no words. And you'll often notice when the non-dual teacher gets onto the truth and gets close to explaining it, they start to stumble. They start to trip over their words because when the truth is known, known by that which is the knowing, there's the words. Words of its symbols twice removed. So I make this fundamental. And I take this fundamental stance on non-duality. You are not God. And and you will never be. <laughs> what will be is what is. And that which appears to be speaking thinking, learning, sensing, feeling is a misperception. And that misperception doesn't exist. So it can never be that which is God. So I want to start with this tongue-in-cheek statement. A godlike complex is really a psychosis. <laughs> Now, now, now some teachers are going to be insulted. And it's a psychosis by the ego's misappropriation of the truth. And unfortunately, this is why. To make itself appear more spiritually special than it was before. Because look at me, I'm progressing. God forbid, more spiritually special than others. Because now we're straight back into comparison, competition, duality. And and. The ego has a godlike complex. And so the god of the universe is the dreaming mind, which is the sun. But it's not really happening. So don't be fooled by ignorant non-dualist teachers. And I mean ignorant with all due loving respect, because it, ignorance is, is as a consequence of lack of true transcendence which brings you into the real non-dual knowing. Again, yeah, I'm struggling for words. So ignorant non-dual teachers who teach concepts without having transcended the thoughtless, and there's the, there's the clue, the thoughtless egoic self. So when you think you've got it, you, the minute you think you think you're out, you don't think at all. Thought is, thought is, you are thought, you're thought and form. And so whether they have good intentions or not, the ignorance is what clouds it. The ignorance in terms of ignoring the truth, which is all-pervading. So non-duality does not mean that you are God. Grasping non-duality doesn't mean you grasp you are God. How can you? What's grasping? God is not dreaming. The Son of God is dreaming. And without that critical understanding, true transcendence cannot happen. 
Because when the illusion fails you, the life experience in the illusion fails you, it's going to be your stumbling ob obstacle to peace because you're going. the ego is going to say, well, since you're God, how come this is failing? What have you done to deserve this God? And God doesn't dream. The essence of what is, is always and forever, eternally, that which is itself changeless. The eternal now never changes because if it changes, then it wasn't in the now. The now cannot change, for it is always now. And now is another word for God. It's the eternal now. Eternal, the same now, forever, cannot change. And so if it cannot change, it could never have dreamt. And if it could never have dreamt, it could never have manifested illusion, illusionary universe. So something happened. And we're, and this is one, the one place where the, where the Course in Miracles is just so beautiful in the way that it, through storytelling, brings you into a deeper understanding. And it's through that surrendering to that understanding, the undoing, the unfolding starts as you let go and you let God and you let go of what? Concept, self-concept, self-idea, that even trying to understand. And it really just asks you, course is only asking you to do one thing, practice forgiveness until, nothing, until there's nothing more to forgive. And then what? Well, don't worry about the future. The future is none of your concern. It's God's concern. That's, that's God's role. And so the son of God is dreaming. So let's, let's just explore this for someone who's new to the concept son of God. And we're not talking about the biblical dualistic teachings of the Bible, as in Jesus being the son of God. Yes, of course, Jesus is the son of God. So is every living thing. There's no exclusivity to Jesus. And that's where people that are resistant to religion, when they hear the, court, the, the word son or God or Holy Spirit, and of course, they immediately get their resistance up. Because they go, oh, gosh, we're straight back into religion. And many a course student teacher does that too. So the word, the word son in the non-dual understanding is really an expression for that, which is the extension of source, the extension of God. God is forever extending, and God is light. And so imagine light cells forever ever extending, and one cell is a sun, and one cell in the infinitum, which is God, one cell is dreaming this entire universe. So that which is, is and can never change. And so the sun, a cell of God, a cell in God, dreaming, is thus created from the self-same essence energy as God. Changeless energy. And an error occurred in that cell, sun's mind. Why? We can't ask the question because we're the activities of that error. We are the error activity. But deep within, there is a memory that calls for it to know itself as that which has always been and always will be the eternal now God. The extension. So the sun is dreaming a dream of forgetfulness. It forgot. And it forgot for a, a whatever bizarre reason it chose to forget. We can conceptualize why it forgot what it is. And let's just go back into the innocence of a child. Why? Why? Why is it always perfect? What was before this? It's an innocent enough question. And what was before whatever it is? Nothing. And so it dreamt of nothing. It dreamt of forgetfulness. It forgot. And it's this forgetfulness, it dreamt of darkness. Boom, the big bang. That led to belief and separation. Aloneness. I'm alone. I've been abandoned. I must have done something wrong. And that belief led to the belief in separation led to the belief in fear. If I've done something wrong, I'm going to get punished. I'm sinful. I've done something wrong. Therefore, I must be guilty. Therefore, I'm unworthy. And that then led in the appearance of space and time as we're now manifesting the universe as an extension of our dreaming activity led to the belief in punishment, destruction, scarcity, suffering, the projection of the universe. Eventually, 16.4 billion years later, what appears to be you and I, sentient beings, experiencing itself as separate beings, 
in this vast thing of which we have no recollection having created? Well, most don't. And yet some have access to the ancient sequence of events that became what we think is the creation, which has got nothing to do with God's true creation, which is the extension of itself, love, light, peace. So what we call the creation, the universe, is the creation of a dream, the contents of a dreaming mind. The universe is the ever-extending content of a dreaming mind, which is still extending because the Son of God extends. And so the appearance of the universe appears to extend but as the sun awakens, it'll collapse and there will be no universe. There'll only be that which is God. So the real essence of you or what we call our spirit or our soul is the one son of God dreaming. And what appears as you, body, mind, in the dream of the illusion of the universe is but one of billions of fractured, localized thought activities, thought appearing to be in form of the sun's dreaming mind, meaning that what appears to be you is an activity in a mind that has forgotten what it is. Within the activities contain the memory, the memory of God. But the activity cannot say it's God. When you dream at night, unaware that once you're in, in your dream as a projection of yourself dreaming, can any of those activity people that are characters that appear in your dream claim to be you, the dreamer, if you're unaware that you're dreaming? Nope. It's an activity of your dreaming mind. And so even you appearing in your own dream dreaming, not aware that you're dreaming, have no idea that you are the dreamer. The dreamer is not God. The dreamer is the sun. That which dreams is not God. That which dreams is a cell, sun, in God dreaming. The appearance of the you, body, mind localization cannot thus awaken. None of your dream characters at night can awaken. What are they awakened to? You that dreams them awakens in the morning. And when do you awaken? When the localization of your dream activity in your dreaming mind ends for whatever reason. And you awaken morning light. The light has come. But the activity, the dreamer, can become self-aware of your true essence, true self as that which is the true essence of the dreamer's mind. So what's the true essence of the dreamer's mind? The true essence of the dreamer is the essence, which is our shared essence, lots of essences here, with God. So God's essence, spirit, is your true essence. But since you're dreaming, the activities that you've dreamt up have no idea of the truth. But since the real you and the essence of you is the essence of God, the activities, although they appear to be real, the essence of everything happens in your mind, which happens in God's mind. So your essence, your spirit, your soul, for want of a better word, is the same as God's spirit. It's the energy of it is spirit. God is spirit and God is holy. So your essence is holy spirit. The essence of you, not the manifestation, the forgetful projection is not God. The essence is. And, what, and when what appears as you, the body-mind character, becomes aware of the all-pervading awareness, the content of the mind, the content in which the substrate in which everything exists, the localized character or body-mind appearance starts to dissolve its separation identity the belief in itself as real and something steps beyond it. So it's what we call, it becomes I am. I am is awareness. I am is aware of awareness itself. And at some stage, even that I am will dissolve 
and leave only that which is the I, God. And so the appearance, the self realizes that there is no separate body, mind, self, and that the appearing character, you, contains within itself that which calls itself back to itself. The holy essence, holy essence, holy spirit. What is holy spirit? Memory, the holy memory of the truth, the truth which is contained in the essence, the truth which is spirit, God's spirit, God's holy spirit, our shared being with God. So there's a dissolving of identity. And that brings us into presence, the eternal now, where there's no past, there's no future, there's just Silent stillness, which I've explained before, isn't boring because it'll bubble to this top and move through you as the joyous, passionate, pass I on expression of the essence, the self, the holy essence. And so as each seemingly separate character, you, me, eight billion of us, dissolve our body-mind identity, believing in separation, Dissolve in the light, light of awareness. The dreaming sun and where we, of which we are activities in his dream awakens to the memory of itself. So as the dream characters dissolve, what is left in this, what appeared to be space is just light. And so as these little shadow selves dissolve, the essence of them is exposed. The light within them is exposed. And so the sun's dreaming mind awakens to the remembrance of itself as light, as that which is the extension of the self-same essence, shared holy essence with God. You're not awakening. You're dissolving. The sun's awakening. The real essence of you, sun, awakens to self and knows that itself is made, created from the self-same essence as its creator. So the curtain drops. It's just the continuum of life. This is atonement. You not atoning. The sun atones at one minute, joins again, knowingly with the light. This is salvation. This is being yourself, realizing you are the dreamer that is localized as this. And that which is dreamt, these localizations actually in truth doesn't exist for it's only the shared essence as the extension of God. And what is required, what is needed for this to happen, for this self-realization to happen is your willingness to let it happen. You see, it's already happened. It's already over. The dream's over. But just like when you wake up in the morning and you had a terrible dream where you were a nasty little shit and you haven't forgiven yourself for drowning puppies, you know, my drowning puppies dream. And so you're mauling around having breakfast and and drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes, and you're moping around the house, and you're like, I can't believe I killed those puppies. Mm -hmm. You still think it's real. You still, you still think you haven't forgiven yourself for dreaming up an illusion that never happened. And so all that's required is your willingness to let it happen since already happened in the holy instant that time forgot was over. And this is the true letting go and letting God's will be done. You are not. God, Holy Son of God, you are an activity in the dream of the Son of God's mind. The real essence of you is the Son, which is the extension of God's light in the eternal now. And how is this realization achieved? And I use the word achieved. How, how will it naturally happen? Well, suspend all judgment of what is appearing in what is the dreamer's mind, in what is God. So the appearance of the dream, stop, dream, stop judgment, self and others, past and future. Do what the course teaches. It gives you a function. Practice forgiveness. So when any obstacle to peace comes up, practice forgiveness. So when in, any obstacle comes in, any thought pops in there and, and, and disrupts you, and it's always, you know, brought in through the past thoughts, projected into the future, resistance of what is fear, sin, guilt. So it comes into your awareness. You think it comes into your mind. It's just awareness. There's no mind. 
and don't get caught by the thoughts that trigger emotions, feelings, or sensations, no matter what the content of form. See them, everything's okay until you identify with them. The minute you've identified with the sensation, feeling, thought, emotion, you're trapped by the emotion. See it, don't engage. Neti, neti, I'm not this, I'm not that. To whom does this thought appear? Direct path. And then practice silent stillness. This is meditation, which is a natural process. But since it's become unnatural in our body-mind activities, in our busy, busy, chopping wood, fetching water, and taking it all very seriously lives, find the stillness and practice chopping wood and fetching water while the silent stillness is all pervading. And then go into gratitude as often as possible. I'm grateful for what? For being, for our shared being, for this, this unveiling, this unfolding, this letting go, this unlearning process, which has been scripted for you. You're just following it. And then this is important. We, we get told about creating. God creates. So create a wonderful life. Make manifest. Build and create and create. You've created the entire universe. Stop it. Stop now. Give the canvas on which you're fantasizing, the screen, the canvas, on which you're fantasizing a life, and then learning these egoic tricks of law of attraction, which is a misappropriation of the law of reciprocity, the law of one, which is the continuum extension of love in God's mind. So no more telling stories. No more telling stories. Because stories are always associated to the past. There's always some form of suffering, some form of resistance, or the grandiosity of the ego. So littleness or grandiosity. Glory stories. When I did this and when I did that, look how many people I helped, look how kind and good I am. And importantly, this is where the church and non-duality agree. Forget about the tarot and the future and the blah, blah, blah. The future is none of your concern. Don't try and predict it and plan for it. Let go, let God. And why do we want the future? Because we're resisting the past and we're resisting the present because we're in resistance to what is. Allow what is. Everything's okay. As long as you're aware, everything is appearing in what is. And what appears, appears in what is God. And so, or the son of God's mind, which appears in God. And so forget about the future. Forget about making manifest, improving self. What you want to do is let go of self and let the light of awareness improve that which is in ways that you could never imagine that could be. So stop trying to make manifest your fantasies using law of attraction. Give the canvas back to God. Because no matter what you think you can paint on, imagine a Picasso, beautiful painting, and then he's always unhappy, and he paints again, and whitewash the whole thing, and start again, and start again. And after millions of years of practice, you'll still never get it perfect, because the canvas is pure white, pure light, pure awareness. And if you put a picture on it, it's no longer that which is meant to be. Give the canvas of your life back to God. Be 100% willing to be shown. And how can you be shown while you're busy imagining? Imagination created the universe. Imagination is the consequence of having forgotten what you are. The light of awareness is still flowing through it. But the filtration device that you created, which we call ego, Cynthia guilt, is resisting the light so it appears as object. So be willing to be shown by only following the desire of your heart. The desire of the heart is the only desire that exists, which is the heart which is the Holy Spirit, which is the memory. It's the desire of the memory, which is to seek you first the kingdom. Seek you first to know thyself. You are the king. That's all you will wish for. And you hand it over. And of course, what about making manifest? What do I do? How do I make a meaningful life? It's already meaningless and it never could be meaningful, but except when you truly know the meaningfulness of the essence of what you are. So acknowledge that you know nothing and you'll realize that most great masters, when they come to that realization, when they thought they finally got it, they get to that point when they go, bah, I don't know anything. I don't actually know anything. That's the one thing I know is I can't know anything because even if I think I know everything, I know no thing. There's nothing to know. And so just admit that you have no idea what is good for you or the world. 
but know that the essence which sustains you, the life essence, that which is life itself, the energy, which allows all of this to appear in something that's never actually happened, knows what's best for you. So stop fantasizing, stop wishing, stop dreaming, especially for, because it's always about the future and I'm better improved and more enlightened, whatever you. This is it. And it's unfolding and it's unfolding and it's returning back to its natural source. And that returning back to its natural source is what appears to be happening in the future because you're trapped in the idea of space time, but it's happened in a holy instant. It's already over. And so it seems to be an evolution or a progression towards self-awareness, self-realization, the realization of what is as that which is that as the extension of God. So ask only to be shown and will, and be willing to receive the inspired guidance from within, from within your only essence, the memory, the Holy Spirit of God in you as the real essence, your shared essence with God. Because it's that shared essence, that Holy Spirit, which is the real you, has never forgotten its source, God. It's that which calls you to dissolve the separate body mind identity and to be as is eternally in the now god and so to wrap this up before you start can painting on the canvas again before you start imagining what it should be before you start grasping into concepts be here now and give the canvas of your life don't imagine so whenever there's a resistance thought and you imagine what it should be, give the canvas back to God, clear the thought. When you start imagining what your future should be or what you want and what you think is going to make you happy or who you think is going to make you happy or what activity is going to make you happy, before you even start painting, put that paintbrush down. Give the canvas back to God. And the only way you will know to give the canvas back to God is go into silence, stillness, and gratitude and be grateful that the hand which paints the reality of the only reality there is, which is our holy shed essence with God, can paint better than you've ever had. <laughs> and so what will you paint on that canvas? You'll paint a happy dream, a happy dream that will dissolve in terms of content and activities and people, places, things, and events, and will just be this joyous lightness of being as the all-pervading awareness of the awareness you are the awareness which is our shared essence with God. Be blessed. I hope this brings you closer to thyself knowingly.